Welcome, welcome to another Urban Farm Fruit Tree Program class that is designed to help you get started with your fruit trees. Um, I'm Janice Norton with the Urban Farm here in Phoenix, Arizona, although I'm coming from my little two-piece in a pod in North Peoria. And I'm here tonight with Greg Peterson. Hello, hello. I'm uh, Hi, coming to you from our four-acre farm in Asheville, North Carolina. And oh, by the way, I will be in town a month from today for okay, the that's... Great Amer Great American Seed Up. Okay, what? <laughs> okay, for those of you who are watching this later, this is for the 2023 Great American Seed Up that's happening on October 27th and 28th. Yes. So... <laughs> <laughs> in the recording. And if you're listening to this later, check out greatamericanseedup.org for our right? yearly events and our... Um, and our seed up in a box. That's greatamericanseedup.org. Right. Now, Greg, let me take the lead on tonight's class because this is my uh, focus and I've been the one that's helping run the, the general store. And he's like, this is your idea. You run with it. Thanks, Greg. You bet. Right. You're great. So, um, I'm going to go take a nap. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, We've been teaching about some of the basic elements on how to get fruit trees to succeed, and whether that is a citrus tree or a deciduous tree, whether it's in the ground or in grass, um, whether or not you're having difficulties with your soil or not, if you want to have just one tree or a lot of trees, we've got lots of different suggestions on how you can make these different uh, challenges be less of a challenge. But with all of this and with all of the, the systems we've put in place to help you get your success and get the education and get access to these answers, um, one very common question is, what do I need? I got the <laughs> tree. I know what I, I got my apple. I got my orange. What do I need to go with it? And so we created, I created this little oh, class. Thank you very much. I was going to say, <laughs> I didn't have much to do with this. I created this class and the class is what supplies do I need for my fruit trees? And we're going to tackle this in two parts. We're going to start first with what do I need to get my trees in the ground? And then we're going to go into the what do I need to take care of my trees for the year? They are slightly different. So um, I put on here that this is updated September 2023 in case we change it later. So let's start with what does the basic fruit tree need when planting? There are five core elements of what you need to include with your purchase to make sure that you get your tree planted. The first obviously is the tree, but after that you need some soil or some planting mix. Um, then you're going to need some starter amendments to help start the nutrition in there and some of the other microbial life that is necessary for a good tree to start off. You're going to need some organic fertilizer, also part of the nutrition, some woody mulch to kind of pack it in and make it really nice and protect it from certain elements. And then we have an, an optional item where you can level up with what I'm now calling this year our secret sauce or our uh -huh. root soak. Love that. Love uh -huh. that. So before you, before you skip off of this slide, I love that picture. Um, yeah, that actually, I can see my tower garden in the background. So that was, that was the uh, fruit apple tree at the urban farm. Yep. Uh, I, I always like to tell people that you're going to spend as much the first year on the tree as you are on amendments and that kind of stuff for the success of the tree. And we have found that what we're about ready to present and all the stuff we're presenting uh, in all of our classes, this is content that we have developed uh, over the past 30 plus years. Yeah. So this works. I mean, Greg's been developing it for 30 plus years. I've been part of the last six or seven, maybe eight years, but it definitely, I can attest to it. My yard, these beautiful trees behind me can attest to it. So here we go. The first item that you need to put on your shopping list when you buy a new tree is some sort of planting mix, some sort of soil building thing, because especially here in the local desert, our soil's dead. 
you know, even if you have good soil, you still need to have some replenished organic material in there. So Greg, this is actually your farmer Greg's mix. Let's, why don't you describe it? All right, so let's step back a little bit. Um, what we have in most cases, and this is the case for Phoenix and the case for Asheville, is clay soil. And if you have clay soil or sand soil, they all need this, but there's five components of healthy soil. And that is dirt, airspace, water, organic matter, and everything that's alive in the soil. So what we've found is that the fix for heavy clay soil or heavy soil or sandy soil is to add lots and lots and lots of organic matter. And what we suggest that you do when you plant your trees, you dig a hole two feet by two feet by a foot deep, and you take 40% of that native soil out of the hole, you put it in a wheelbarrow, and then you add planting mix. If you're in Phoenix, we've created a product called a Farmer Greg's Planting Mix. And it's a really nice mixture of, of compost, composted pine bark, cocoa core, and perlite. It's a nice mixture. And so what we're suggesting is a for a number five or a five gallon tree, we suggest at least one bag, if not one and a half bags of the Farmer Greg's planting mix. For the larger trees, we, we really suggest two bags. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix that all up in the wheelbarrow with all the supplements we're gonna talk about, and then you're gonna plant the tree with that. That super energizes the soil with organic matter. And that is the single biggest thing that you can do to fix soil that oh, is just much. dirt, right? Yeah. Now we're going to, Greg went through some of our planting needs and I want to let you know that we're just going to skip over some of that this time. If you want more information about the different steps, we do have other classes. So if his answer made sense to you, yay, you've been watching the other classes. If it kind of seemed like it was quick and short, that's mm -hmm. because he wants you to take the other classes and catch up. Which is the big class for you to take is planting, watering, and fertilizing. And that's over in our root camp. Yeah. Curriculum. All right. So item one was some soil or some planting mix. Um, we do offer it. Um, we also have a buy three, get one free offer on our planting mix. So if you are getting two trees, you know, you buy three bags, you get a fourth bag free. And it's really easy to do that in the shopping cart. Scroll down a little bit right above the add to cart. There's a buy in bulk button or excuse me, checkbox. You click that. And then for every one purchase you make of that, it's four bags. All right. So then we're going to go on to the next item, which is starter amendments. This gets mixed in with the soil mixture that Greg just talked about, the 60-40. And we're talking that every tree that gets planted, and this is every fruit tree, uh, even the mesquite is going to benefit from this. Although there's a, there is a, uh, a lot of people out there talking about trying to keep mesquite in as natural soil as possible. My point is our deserts are really devoid and of, of nutrients, and we've been having such really, really extreme weather. I'm hearing somebody say that it's going to be super cold this winter. We'll see. Um, but with the extremes that we're running, why would you plant a tree and not give it some food to get started off? It'll take care of itself after that. And this, gonna... is, this is, Janice, this is actually good for anything you're planting. Anything. Not just fruit trees. Anything, because this is... This is what's going to start the life in the soil. And because we're starting with worm castings, it's worm poop, hello. There's already uh, worms in the soil. In most other areas, they have plenty of worms. We don't have so many, but yes, you want the worm castings. Two pounds of azomite. Greg, you wanna explain what azomite is? I love that you can do. Azomite is a micronutrient with 70 different vitamins in it, essentially. It. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's rock dust and it's got amazing nutrients in it. It's a vitamin pill for your tree. It's rock dust. It's it's rock that has been pulverized to the point that it's easier for the, the uh, bioorganisms in the soil to uptake the nutrients. And two ounces of myco. That's not a lot, but it, we've got a fabulous program here with our myco purchasing. Um, but two pounds of worm castings, 
two pounds of azomite and two ounces of myco, which is the bio, the, the bacteria and fungi that are going to help in not uh, attach to the roots and start transporting those nutrients. It becomes a symbiotic relation. Check out more in planting, watering, and fertilizing where we describe it. Yeah. Now, our starter amendments at our a general store, we have two different ways to get this. You can get it in the three tree version, which has six, six, and six, or you can get it in the one tree version, which is two, two, and two. Choose wisely based on what your order is and what number of trees. One of the things that I also encourage people to do is if you have a larger tree that is uh it doesn't have a basin around the base of it, rake back the gravel or dirt underneath the tree, spread a three tree multi-kit underneath it and some woody mulch and water it real good. Okay, that's uh, in the next section. You're going to the next section. Right. We're doing cool. planting. For planting, this is what you need for planting. All right, for planting, you also need some organic fertilizer and we are critical on this. It has to be organic. Greg, how's somebody going to recognize an organic fertilizer? Uh, it says OMRI on it. O M R I. <laughs> OMRI. It's OMRI certified. Uh, and and the other indication is the numbers. There's three numbers. If any of those three numbers are over ten, it's likely not organic. And those yeah. three numbers represent uh, ni nitrogen. Phosphorus. Potassium and phosphorus and potassium. There we go. The organic fertilizer that we're suggesting you put in the hole is just two pounds or about five cups, right? Yep. This is going to go in with the mixture that you're putting in your hole. Now, we at the store do have it coming in two different choices. Both of these products are great. They're locally made. The Bioflora is a 665 with calcium. Um, it runs about... Uh, is 50 pounds and it's going to be about $2.40 per tree if you buy this 50 pound bag just for planting. If you planted uh, 25 trees, that's how much it would cost you. Um, we do have for a smaller bag, we have a 10 pound bag and it'll run about $4 a tree. It's still not that expensive when you're starting adding up your price, but you're piecemealing it together. The Bioflora is, or the Tanks is a two, two, one with a lot of other stuff. So they're not exactly the same, but they're both really, really good. The next thing with your basin creation is you're gonna need mulch. We've talked about that with Greg's six, six rule. I would say ad nauseum, but we're gonna keep doing it. So you need uh -huh. your six, six rule. Um, so six inches deep in a six foot base, and we're going to do the math for you here. That's approximately 14 cubic feet. And if you can do the math on that again, that's about half a cubic yard per tree. Now, we don't need you to go ahead and start off with that much. That's a lot. In fact, it could be quite expensive if you buy a bunch of trees. So we're going to say start with four bags of mulch or eight cubic feet to get going. And then you can either piecemeal it out a little bit at a time if you want for buying from us, or you can go to some other options. Greg, what are some of the other options? Uh, Chipdrop.com is a great option. And if you have 15 or 20 trees that you're planting, getting a 20 cubic yard load of woody mulch from Chipdrop.com is uh, probably going to be perfect for you. Mm -hmm. Don't don't be intimidated by 20 cubic yards. It goes fast, I promise. So that's one option. Another option is checking with our friends at Arizona Worm Farm. That's arizonawormfarm.com. And they have uh, a delivery program. You can either take your truck there and ha have them load a truckload for you, or you can um, have them deliver it to your house. And if you're watching this video and you're down in Tucson, you can go directly to Tanks because Tanks will take care of you. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Then you're going to start it off with about four bags around each tree and then just replenish and keep building it up. All right. Now let's talk about leveling up. This is an optional thing that we highly recommend and completely endorse. 
We have a secret sauce and a root soak. These have been tested and in, created by the scientists over there at High Creations. And they've gone through a lot of different iterations to figure out which one they like. Um, but basically the secret sauce is three caps of each of those four liquids in one gallon. And that's what you're gonna use on each tree. And there's a process to this, go to planting, watering, fertilizing, or into our um, root camp to find it. The root soak is three caps of essence and soul in five gallons of water, and that'll take care of one to three trees. So with the liquid combo, because we do it as a buy three, get one free, it works out to be about a dollar ninety of what you're spending on that goes on the trees. The rest of it you're going to use over time for the next year. All right, that's what you needed to get your tree planted. That was it. If you just buy those items, then you're going to be ready to plant your tree. But we aren't going to leave you there. We're going to talk about what you need to get your tree taken care of for the next year so you can do your math. So what does a tree, a tree need for basic ongoing care in a year? Food. Greg, uh, what have you been talking about? How to feed a tree? Oh, yeah. So here's the here's the deal. If you only feed a tree once or twice a year, it's not getting enough food. If you were to only feed a, you know, an animal once or twice a year, it's just not enough. This is a plant. It doesn't need to be fed every day, but you need to set it up so that it can eat every day. And we do that with um, four times of granular uh, organic fertilizer and then the foliar and drench fertilizing. See, the thing is, is that organic fertilizer is a slow release. So it is something that they're just going to be nibbling at over the next several weeks, you know, to two months. And by the time the two months are up, usually that's when they're about ready for the next batch. That's what organic fertilizer work, how that works. And then you're going to need some amendments. They're this, mostly the same amendments as the starter amendments, but not completely. Uh, and some more woody mulch. Obviously, you didn't get all that you needed in the first batch, but you got enough to get started. And the optional leveling up with more drenching and foliar feeding. Well, and here's the, here's the thing with the woody mulch, Janice, is that it breaks down. Exactly. And as it's breaking down, you want to replenish it. And you, you really need woody mulch on an ongoing basis. Well, he'll explain that when we get to that slide. All right, let's start with organic fertilizer. You're going to need one pound or two and a half cups of organic fertilizer per inch trunk diameter. Craig, what's an inch trunk diameter? So what you do is you measure the trunk of your tree. Just look at the tree, hold up a measuring tape. And so if it's one inch, you're going to fertilize it with one pound of fertilizer. If it's two inches, you're going to go with two pounds of fertilizer. If it's three inches, you're going to go with three inches of fertilizer four times a year. How far up the trunk are they going to measure from the ground? Uh, great question. Six to eight inches. Yeah, that's when it starts to level out and the trunk size is going to be the same pretty much for either way there. And that's where you measure what you need. So what you're looking at in a 50 pound bag is about $1.20 per inch. So if you add up all your trees, how many inches you have, that's how many pounds you're gonna need. And that's what you're looking at feeding your trees. If you buy the 10 pound bag of Supermix, an awesome amount, I mean, an awesome uh, product as well. If you only have five trees, then the Supermix is probably the size that'll work best for you. If you have more than five trees, the Bioflora is gonna work best for you. We love both of them. And both of those products are good in your organic gardens too. So here's where the leveling up is or the going into the feeding during the granular system. When you are feeding four times a year, if you add worm castings at about a pound per um, tree inch four times a year, so it's the equivalent of, of fertilizer, also add that much worm castings, mix them together and feed your tree with that, your tree will be really happy. If you throw in um, about twice a year, you throw in a little extra azomite, 
that'll be good too. Greg's taking notes over there. <laughs> and then for ongoing care, wow, I got itchiness is on my nose right now. For ongoing care, you're going to up, increase and replenish your woody mulch. Greg, now you can go in your little woody mulch spiegel. Yeah, so woody mulch, the cool thing about woody mulch is it acts just like a forest when you add it. At the interface between the dirt and the woody mulch, it breaks down to this really incredible soil really quickly. And it breaks down over time. So you're going to be adding woody mulch year over year over year because you want to keep building that healthy soil on top. And it's so worth it. Oh, it yeah. is so worth it. I have mulch across my entire backyard. And the immediately upon putting it in my backyard, the dust went down, disappeared. My uh, my neighborhood had a had a bunch of new houses, and my house was the cleanest house on the street because I had woody mulch in the backyard, and I didn't have the dusty yards. Um, nice. But the the trees are happy. the The life in my backyard is fabulous. Are there bugs? Yes, there's bugs. Am I excited about the bugs? Yes, I'm excited about the bugs. Do I see things like uh, like scorpions? Not really. I'm sure they might be back there, but I don't have a problem with them. Um, do I see other things? I have so many beautiful other things back there. I love it. Mulch is so cool. All right. So uh, I want to talk touch on something real quick. Um, Shoda from Tanks Green Stuff presented at our tree program this year and yes. his his presentation is in root camp is it not janice i believe so i was actually going to ask you about that earlier i'm pretty sure we put our it should be over there no the the one from the 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 launch party is absolutely in root camp perfect go watch the one from shoda on healthy soil and because i you just mentioned um bugs uh huh. Joseph is asking what can be added to the hole to deter termites. Woody mulch, especially as it's breaking down into soil, doesn't attract termites. And the reason I brought Shoda up is because he covered that in depth in his uh, in his presentation. So if you want to know about uh, termites and scorpions and roaches, he covered all of that in his presentation on why it, the woody mulch doesn't attract them. Right now, that is uh, lesson 3.11. Soil is where it all starts. Perfect. All right. Now, since you might have already purchased the four-pack combo, let's talk about drenching and for foliar feeding. Now, each bottle has uh, 946 milliliters in it or about 160 capfuls. So that tells you how many how much use you're going to get out of each bottle. Um, you're going to drench with about three ounces of heart each month. You may go through that quite quickly if you have more than five trees. And we do have the these bottles in five gallon at a fabulous savings. The price for this will go down dramatically. Um, but you're going to do heart each month in a drench. In the high heat months, when our trees are really struggling because our, we've got 115 degree temperatures or the whole month over 110, we're going to encourage you to do, like if you're, if you're drenching at the beginning of the month, then in the middle of the month, you're going to do essence and soul. So about every 10 days or so, you're going to do a different formula. So one, one version, you're going to do heart, and then 10 or 15 days later, you're going to do heart and uh, essence and soul. Then 10 or 15 days later, you're going to go back to heart. Then 10 or 15 days later, you're going to go back to essence and soul, depending on your water cycle, on how you're watering. And what we're finding with this is that this does a tremendous job. Uh oh, a tremendous job <laughs> of of having them thrive through the summer. Really, really, really. And if you have an uh, an inline fertigation tank leave your fertigation tank just heart and do the essence and soul manually because you don't want to mix essence and heart at those concentrations. 
They're great in a diluted form. They're not so great when you mix them in the concentrated versions. Um, foliar feet, it's foliar feet. Foliar feeding is going to change with the season. It's going to change with the needs. It's going to be soul and essence or soul and noble gills uh, that you're going to try and do this minimum once a month. We would recommend twice a month if you can uh, until you get to the high heat or the high or the super low cold and your work around that. In the valley, on my nutrition schedule that I created, I said you don't need to do the drench in the winter. Well, yeah, you don't need to do a drench if you live someplace where the ground freezes. But if mm. you live in our valley here where I live, our ground does not freeze. You can go ahead and drench all year long because there's life, there's things happening in the soil that'll benefit from the drench. Can you explain a couple things real quick, just so that people know what page we're on? What is drench and what is fertigation? Okay, excellent question. Uh, drenching is when you are creating a solution of nutrients. Usually you have a diluted so solution of a concentrate in water, and then you're going to pour this into the basin. This is going directly into the soil around your plant, your tree, your bush, your vine, your garden, whatever it is, you're going to put this diluted concentrate into your basin to feed the soil. And that in turn is going to take care of all the nutrients and it will create a symbiosis. The symbiosis that's happening with the mycorrhiza and all the organisms and your tree all benefit from this. And that's a drench. Fertigation is basically a system that automates drenching. So what you've done with a fertigation is you have this tank or this reservoir that you will put the concentrate into and the concentrate is, is sucked out through water pressure a little bit at a time directly into the water line. So when you're watering your trees, it is trickling out a little bit of the concentrate at the same time. So you can turn that system on or off as necessary. Um, I just have mine with heart and I leave it almost all the time. Every time I water, I'm giving it a little bit of heart. Nice. So fertigation is an automated system to apply the drench. And foliar is when you are taking the concentrate, you're diluting it in uh, in water, one or two or five gallons, however, whatever your size of your tank is, and then you're spraying it onto the trees. And we'll talk about how to spray it a little bit later, but you're spraying it onto the leaves and the branches. And if you have a tree in trouble, you definitely want to get all the leaves and all the branches because they need it. And there's specifics about how and when and how much, and that's all explained in root camp um, in through the nutrition calendar on those items. So what else do you need? That's the basics that you need to take care of planting and to take care of ongoing yearly care. But we've been talking about some other items. One of the items that we talk about is a moisture meter. Now, the moisture meter is a small device about uh, eight inches tall that has a long probe on it. And you would stick this into your potted plant or your or the soil around your, your tree or wherever you're trying to test the moisture of the soil. And you're going to test right before you think you need to water. This is going to tell you, is it ready for the water? If it still says moist, then you need to wait. If it says dry, then you waited too long. So, and you'll get better at that. You'll learn to get better at short at recognizing the time span between each watering. The next device is a soil probe, and it's it's more of a tool than a device because all it is is just a, a pole, a, a rod of steel that is about three feet long. The ones that we have are graduated at every inch, and you're every going foot. to every foot. Excuse me. Thank you. Every foot. It's, grad, it's got a little score mark every foot and you put it in the ground and you push on it the, about the day after you watered. So the soil, the moisture meter is right before you water and the soil probe is right after you water. And you're gonna go check around your basin the day after you water and see how far down 
you can push this rod. If it goes down one foot, two foot, three feet, that's how far the moisture got down. If you're not getting down past six inches, you are not watering your tree enough. If you need to add another one, that's the best time to add another watering. So if you just watered one day, especially if you have clay soil, if you just watered one day for a you know, couple hours, whatever, and you come back the next day and you push that in and it only goes down six, eight inches, your tree's not gonna be really happy. And what you can do is that very day, you can turn your water on for another soaking. And it basically is one time for that period. So if you're watering two days in a row, back to back, that's one watering. So that'll take care of your once a month or your twice a month, depending on what time of the year it is. We can go on that more later. Um, the tree wrap or the BTP. BTP, Greg, tell us what BTP <laughs> is and why we like that better than tree wrap. Tree wrap is cloth that you wrap around your tree. It could protects it from the sun. BTP is biodynamic tree paste. I first discovered it about 20 years ago at a conference and they called it poo paint there <laughs> because what they were doing is they were taking some manure and some kaolin clay dust and some straw and mixing it all up and slathering it on the trunk. Um, it puts nutrients right into the tree through the trunk. Um, more importantly, in Arizona, it keeps the tree safe from sun. And for stone fruit, peaches and apricots, it will help keep away borers, peach tree borers. Because if you if you consider that the trunk of the tree and the branches of the tree is where the largest organ of the tree is, it's like it's their skin. And our skin will absorb stuff just like the trees will. So the tree skin will do it, but it also needs some sun protection, some, some uh, you know, sometimes the, the, our, we look for nutrients or, or medicine to come in through our skin. Sometimes we look for uh, sunblock to protect us from the sun. And, you know, sometimes we, you know, might put some sort of cream on to keep the mosquitoes away. That's exactly what we're doing for the trees with the BTP. We love it. However, it's expensive and we are, we have not been able to get to a point where we're able to bring it into our general store at a price that we can reasonably price it for you guys. So we're just telling you about it. And in the meantime, you can do tree wrap, which is also a way to protect. It'll give the sun protection. It'll give the, um, the, the bug protection. It just doesn't give the nutrients. And then there's the bypass pruner. Craig, why do we need a bypass uh, pruner? So there is an anvil pruner and that pruner, uh, imagine a flat plate with a yeah. blade on it. You all have seen it. And when you use it, it crushes the branch of the tree. That's yeah, not it's... good in any way, shape or form. Honestly, I don't know why they sell a anvil pruner. It makes no sense. What you want is a bypass pruner, and that's the kind of pruner that has blades that bypass each other. So what we're talking Use is it. like using a, a somewhat probably dull knife on a cutting board or a pair of scissors. There you go. Absolutely. We want the pair of scissors kind, the bypass pruner. Um, the, the anvil kind is for cutting a larger, probably drier wood, um, but the bypass pruner is for cutting our branches that we like yeah and the last item that i have on my list here is a gopher basket some people in our valley are plagued with gophers or voles or um, ground squirrels or you know even some mice that like to burrow in the trees and they are well they've been growing this way they like the really juicy young 
nodule of tree roots that happen at the base of young trees. Yep. And we want to protect those. We want to give the trees enough time to grow out to create a little bit of sturdiness on their roots so that they're not so young and tasty. And especially in that nodule of, of roots right underneath the tree. So by having a gopher basket, this is a, a metal basket that will expand out and you wrap the tree, you don't wrap the hole, you wrap the bunch of tree roots and you backfill, you have to make sure you don't leave any airspace in it. And this will, uh, and it sticks up a above the ground a few inches and it will protect those, those young tree roots while they're growing out. It will degrade over time and actually provide, you know, rusty type nutrients in the soil, but it's not that bad. And there's different kinds. We have a heavy duty one, which comes as a flat folded basket that you will just expand out. Um, we have those in uh, number five and number 15. If you are getting a number five tree, then a number five will work great. If you're getting 15, a 15 will work great. And if you're getting a bare root tree, we're going to say go to the 15. Don't start with the five because our 15, our roots are bigger. Um, in the other option that we have is something called a speed basket. We do not recommend this for, for bare root trees. Um, this speed basket, we've got the number 15 size and you can use this to just plop your tree in and it kind of rolls up like a pantyhose and or unrolls like a pantyhose up and around the tree. And it's really easy to use. The trick is you have to make sure that you backfill in to make sure that there is no air spaces. A little bit more extra work on that, but the ease of the application is, is there. And then um, the last couple of things that we have on our list are some extra things that might be useful. A tree sling is a really cool webbed uh, stretch of, of webbing that you can use to help secure your tree when you need to stake it so that you're not using wire or rope that could cut in and rub the tree. It it expands with the, the girth of the tree a lot easier. Um, you're only going to use it for a couple of years maximum so that you can get your tree to be able to be able to stand on its own. Um, but you would probably need two per tree. Then there's the sprayer mod kit. Greg, you get to tell us about that one because you love it. Oh, the sprayer mod kit's amazing. It's a uh, two-part product that we have in our uh, shopping cart and it replaces the the wand sprayer on your pump sprayer. Uh, I absolutely love it. It helps uh, with delivering a lot more foliar feed a lot faster on your yeah. trees. Yeah, it does. You get a nice layer of application you can control it with different sprays that you want and it works really nice it's, it shaves time off of your application it makes it so much easier um just rinse it out when you're done put it away leave it on your sprayer rinse out your sprayer when you're yep. done you're good to go yeah. now um the sprayer mod kit is available on our cart and uh there's a video on that item on our cart to tell you how to put it on yep. how it works and then our newest item I'm super excited about is our easy picking fruit harvester. Um, I, sh I was going to put a video in this to show how it works, but it's this really, really cool um, uh, harvester that go that you add to the end of a pole. You can choose your own pole, and it has a a hood of a top that allows you to just kind of grab your fruit to about five inches, um, about five inches wide or so. I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to show this. This is the easy pick and fruit harvester. Um, this is what nice. it looks like. And it has, it goes on the edge of a pole. You can stand in it. Just the fruit slides down the pole and you don't have to climb up a ladder. And there, it just, it's so easy. I love this. I used it, Greg, on my um, on my mesquite tree the other day. 
I mean, nice. I used it on my plum. I tried it on my plum tree and it went up really nice. And I got one up there that I still had left over on my plum tree, but then I used it on my mesquite and it worked on that one too. I Excellent. don't, I don't have a video, but they're out there and we have this. So I love this. So cool. that is it. I want to answer a couple of questions out there. Um, Greg was asking about the starter amendments, if that was for the empty square hole, or is this the starter mix for placing around the tree? Both. Yeah. So if you have a newly planted tree, you mix it up and put it in the hole. And if you have a tree that needs a basin or needs nutrition, you can put it in the basin around the base of the tree. And hello, Greg, it's nice to see your name in our class. He and I go way, way, way back. The only thing is the starter amendment has mycorrhiza. And you can do this and save the mycorrhiza for use in your vegetable garden because you can use mycorrhiza with every time you plant something to help your vegetable garden do well. Um, you don't need to keep adding mycorrhiza to your trees unless the tree is struggling. And then we absolutely say, you know, if you've got a sickly tree, it could use the boost. Yeah. So well, and it's, um, it's easy to, I, I do suggest for people doing the, basin repair around your tree absolutely add the mycorrhiza and it's it's easy to do um to grab a package bundle like that when we're in stock i don't we don't carry worm castings all year long um and we do have them as package bundles and if you don't want to use the mycorrhiza you keep the mycorrhiza separate and you can save it for something else or yeah. if you want to save money you just buy the worm castings and the azomite as needed but yes now we do have education and resources. We have our new root camp. We are so excited about root camp. Yeah, big time. We are so excited. And basically it's a library of class replays and access to some PDFs and downloadable documents um, and articles, lessons. Uh, it's basic training for fruit tree growing and it's free. Um. Yeah. Then we have the, the general store, which is another resource. You can go in, you can learn about the different trees um, that we have. You can um, pick up your trees, your supplies. Now, our tree pickup is only at the nursery lot, but our general store supplies, we have most of those year round in our three locations. We have one in North Peoria, that's me. We have one in North Glendale, that's Ray at Morningstar Garden. And then we have one in Mesa, that's our buddy Dallin at Slade Family Farms. And we can take care of some year round uh, purchasings. Uh, both Raymond and Dallin have agreed to stock up, uh, or carry some bioflora and azomite as well. I'm like, nice. yay, go for it. Um, we have tree chats, monthly tree chats to help with questions and answers and Greg and I give little lessons and sometimes we'll talk to people about different stuff and then we answer questions. Uh, we have consults. Greg, you've been doing consults for a long time. Oh, about 14 years actually. What we do is we spend an hour on the phone. It's a virtual consult and you send us pictures in your address and here's what we promise. You will learn so much. If you're not wowed by this, we will give you your money back. And I've been saying that since I started doing them 14 years ago. And guess what, Janice? You've not done, you've not had to give your money back. I've never given anybody their money back. Nobody's needed it. Uh, Raymond and I have both started. Raymond is focused on gardens. He would really like to be the garden person. Um, he can definitely talk to fruit trees and permaculture and water harvesting, but he loves gardens. So he would like to do gardens. And I love to do fruit trees and planning on permaculture and stuff. So I'm out there too. Um, cool. And then, and Raymond and I do ours on Zoom. Greg likes to do his on the phone. I like to do mine on Zoom. Um, and then there's the launch party, our annual party, Greg, we just had it. Yeah, just... the launch party, we bring in speakers every year Yeah, uh, and do a three hour event on a Saturday. It's, uh, it's in root camp, the recording of it from a few weeks ago. Do you know so, what's happening next year? Uh, what's happening next year? 
our 25th launch party. Oh my our gosh. 25th year program. Wow. No kidding. <laughs> That's right. 25 been, years. Been doing this 25 years. 25, 24 years ago, I started giving these classes in my living room at the urban farm and I'd have two to four people show up. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I wasn't there, but I talked to people who were there. They come to the lot, like I was in Greg's first classes and I learned so much over the years. Nice. And then, like, it's been fun to meet people who have been around that long. Nice. All right. So, so that, Eileen, go ahead. I was gonna say, that's our class. Eileen says, uh, 20 cubic yards was the biggest pile of mulch uh, they'd ever seen. Yeah, and it disappears fast, I promise. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy says, I'm moving a dwarf peach tree that I bought from you. When should I transplant it? You're going to transplant that when it loses all of its leaves in late December, early January. And you want to when you dig it out, you want to dig the, the hole as big as you can around it. You can bare root it. Big Which as in wide, wide, not big as in deep. Yeah. So, you you know, I'd start probably three feet out and start loosening the soil and just kind of, you know, over the course of 45 minutes or so, keep working the soil until you dig it out delicately. Yeah. The more roots you can save, the happier it'll be when it gets to its new home. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, by doing and it then, in the winter, it's it's already sleepy. It's not going to be as much of the of the transport sh transplant shock. Exactly, and you're going to want to prune it back at least fifty percent on the top. I know that seems drastic, but you're doing a root prune on it. You need to prune the top on it. So. If you do that in the winter, it won't be as shocking to the tree. Yep. All right. All right, well, folks. This Janice. was our our class Let's thank you sure. very much janice that was uh that was awesome you did a great job of it and um yeah my next guys... class is level up that's next week. tuesday next week next tuesday yeah i want to say next week because i don't know who's going to be watching this class when oh that's true you gotta find the class level up all right all right well i think i think we're done with questions and uh Thank you all, everybody. This is going to be in um, root camp, root by, camp tomorrow. by tomorrow. Yep. And for those of you who are local, go grab your supplies. We are at the nursery lot for the last week of September on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You can stock up on wood chips. We've got plenty. You, we've got planting mix. We've even got great soil and uh, and a great top mulch for gardens. Um, come check it out. Come check out this. You can even see the fruit harvester. You can see that too. So awesome. it's good. We're there. All right. All right. Thank you, Miss Janice. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Talk to you later.